Hurry, cops. When it comes to the live-action Transformers movies, I think that it's safe to say that there is a lot to hate about them. Granted, they never presented themselves as prime examples of sophisticated cinema, I think many fans are in the same boat thinking that there was so much more that could have been done to make them not as bad as they ultimately turned out. Still, I do think that despite all the bad, Michael Bay and company did have some good, too great additions to the Transformers mythos as a whole. It's a pretty popular opinion by many fans that while Bay isn't the greatest storyteller, he does excel in making explosive set pieces and memorable action scenes. And as such, while a lot of our favorite classic Autobots and Decepticons ended up more as glorified alt mode commercials with close to zero personalities, I do think that we did get some cool new characters linked to some very memorable moments. Looking at the first movie alone, we got all new Decepticons like Blackout laying waste to a US military base. And who can forget the menacing bone crusher skating down the highway and smashing through a bus? And of course, we got the evil police car barricade, cruelly intimidating a hysterically confused Sam Witwicky in an awesome Ford Mustang police car mode, aggressively revving his engine and bearing his intimidatingly spiky probes at the poor human, before he finally transforms and reveals himself as the evil Decepticon. Chasing and finally pinning down poor Sam, Barricade utters his famous iconic line, the first words we ever hear come out from a live action Transformers mouth. Are you username ladies man 217? Yeah. Where is the eBay item 21153? Where are the glasses? Just perfect if you ask me. And no, I'm not being sarcastic about this. Up to this point, at least I was kind of wondering exactly how the Transformers would be portrayed in live action. Not so much as how they moved around and transformed, but how they would speak and interact with each other and humans. Yes, we did hear the iconic Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime starting things off with a little voice over at the very start. But I was more concerned about how the others, especially the Decepticons, would speak. And hearing Barricade sounding fairly normal gave me quite a relief moving forward. I just love the threatening tone mixed in with a tinge of naivety at him not realizing the silliness of the words he was spouting. Nicely done, Mr. Bay. And speaking of Barricade's voice, at least for the first movie, all credit goes to the voice actor Jess Harnell, who on a side note fronts an awesome band called Rock Sugar that specializes in doing really cool mashups of popular rock songs. Ever wonder what Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody would sound like with a dash of Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue? Or how about Metallica's Enter Sandman with Don't Stop Believing by Journey? Can't imagine? Well then go check Rock Sugar and their album Reimaginator out. So back to Barricade. After his cool introduction, unfortunately it was all downhill from there. Barricade basically lost all his coolness cred in my eyes when he got his ass handed to him by Bumblebee and that would pretty much be it for him for the rest of the movie. After one more cameo during a highway chase scene towards the end of the movie, he seemingly disappears and is not heard of again. Which I guess was ultimately a good thing as all his fellow Decepticons pretty much bit the dust in the final battle. But for those who read the accompanying comic to the movie though, it did seem that the reason Barricade wasn't a part of the final battle was that because he was already dead, killed by Prime during the same highway chase scene that also led to Bone Crusher's demise. Fortunately, his death was retconned and Barricade made his triumphant return in the third movie, Dark of the Moon, wherein he mercilessly executes his prisoner, the poor Autobot Q. To be honest, prior to writing this episode, I had no idea that Barricade was actually in this movie. Okay, I knew that his model was used as one of the background Decepticons or something, but all this time I always thought that it was Soundwave who took out Q. I guess it was because he was voiced by Frank Welker who also voiced Soundwave. And after a while, all those messy Bayverse designs just sort of blend into each other in my brain. Anyway, he's eventually taken down by the humans with a sniper shot to his eye and an explosive charge to the foot. But he still ultimately manages to survive again to return in the fifth movie, The Last Night. This time around, he comes in with an updated, more humanoid design and is seemingly now Megatron's new right hand, Bot. Unfortunately for him, despite his new look and role, he really doesn't do anything significant and basically gets his ass kicked once again by Bumblebee and Grimlock. But oh well, at least he still managed to stay alive, so good for him. In Philippine folklore, we have something called an Anting Anting, which is sort of a mystical talisman that people wear for protection, basically making them invincible. Given how many times Barricade escaped death, I wouldn't be surprised if he sported one. 
Anyway, now that we're basically done with Barricade's rather unimpressive movie resume, let's do a little dive into its origins, shall we? But before we go there, I hope you won't barricade me from asking you all to subscribe to my channel. It will really help me out a lot in telling even more stories. And if you already have subscribed, well, thank you, and please do come back for more. So before the live-action movie, the name Barricade wasn't really connected to any major Decepticon or Autobot from the cartoon or comics. He did exist though as a tiny little Decepticon Micromaster. G1 Barricade was the abusive and authoritarian leader of the Decepticon Racetrack Patrol Team, which was composed of fellow racers Roller Force, Groundhog, and Motorhead. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that as I was completely out of the Transformers and toys in general by the time these little guys rolled around. Also, in order to avoid Energon fans calling me out for ignoring them, I will note that the name Barricade was used again for the leader of the Destruction Team, five Decepticon military vehicles who combined to form the mighty Bruticus Maximus. And while I have absolutely no knowledge about this Barricade in the Energon cartoon, I do have some first-hand experience with these toys. As if the combined name didn't give it away, this set was meant to be an homage to the original G1 combiner, Bruticus. And when it was later recolored in a re-release, the likeness was close enough to the original Bruticus to convince me to purchase it when it went on clearance. Anyway, given the fact that the name Barricade was one of the more obscure Transformer names before the live-action movies, I guess the writers figured that using it for one of their newer characters would draw less ire from traditional and purist G1 fans like myself. So which new character got the name? Well, during the early planning stages of the movie, when Michael Bay and company were still figuring out which Transformers would make the cut, the Autobot military strategist Prowl was a strong candidate to be included. That is, until Bay figured that it would be more fun to have a Transformer that turned into a police car to be a Decepticon instead. And so Prowl was out, and the newly minted Barricade was in, with his perversion of the police slogan of to protect and to serve, now reading as to punish and enslave, proudly emblazoned on the side of his alt mode. You know, I often sh** on Michael Bay for switching out tried and true traditional Transformer concepts for his own dumb ideas, like trading out the Lambo brothers for this set of twins. But I'll give him this, Barricade was a cool twist to the traditional but cliche good guy police car Transformer, and his predominantly black Ford Mustang car mode was just intimidatingly gorgeous. Unfortunately, I can't say that I was a huge fan of the actual Barricade robot design. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm okay with it, but given how cool his alt mode was, I expected a little more. I don't know, his uneven proportions with extra long arms, short legs, and lack of a defined mid-torso made him look almost simian in appearance. Add to that all the spikes and twisted metal, which I get was basically par for the course for most of the movie designs, made him remind me more of a goblin or something, rather than a ruthless armored enforcer. Overall though, I did love this bad cop change. but. I was still hoping against hope that another twist was incoming with Barricade actually being an Autobot double agent in the end, revealing himself to be Prowl all along. But that never really happened. Oh well, it would have been cool. It's also worth noting that before the writers settled on Barricade, another iconic Decepticon, Soundwave was in the mix in early drafts, basically fulfilling the role that Barricade ended up doing in the final movie, i.e. scouring eBay for the item 21153 and eventually stalking and tracking down Ladies Man 217 himself. And even if Soundwave was eventually set aside for future movies, his presence is still felt as Barricade remains partnered with fellow little Decepticon, Frenzy, who is traditionally known as a minion of Soundwave and is colored red. As far as toys go, given that Barricade was part of the main Decepticon movie lineup, he was one of the first movie toys that I got. And even if it wasn't very accurate, his first deluxe-sized movie toy was always one of my favorites in the original toy line, especially since, to my knowledge, this and the later released larger Human Alliance version were the only Barricade toys that actually had a little crude frenzy toy that could be folded up and stored inside his chest. Hell, even the supposedly more accurate studio series or movie masterpiece versions couldn't do that. And speaking of the movie masterpiece version, on a quick side story, I'd like to share that I actually ended up getting two of them. Sort of. See, I was kind of a late starter when it came to collecting movie masterpiece Transformers, and by the time I was all in, MPM-03 Bumblebee and the arguably improved knockoff version were nowhere to be found, at least at a decent secondary market price. And so given how impatient, impulsive, and desperate I was, such a deadly mix for any collector, I found an online seller with a fairly priced Bumblebee. The catch was that he was bundled up with a broken barricade. 
even if I already had a Masterpiece Barricade, I figured that this would be the best chance for me to get a Masterpiece B. And so, I bit the bullet. I figured that I was such a big fan of Barricade's alt mode that it would be cool to have the broken one displayed as such. Of course, as what always seemed to be the case, only a few months after I got my B, MPM collectors all around the world decided to call it quits, and MPM Bs for sale suddenly started popping up everywhere. Ugh. What I am still holding out hope for though, although chances are pretty slim to none, is a good masterpiece version of Barricade's upgraded look from the last night. While his original twisted metal and spiky look is more iconic, this is the look of Barricade that I love. Everything I wasn't a fan of with his original look are, in my opinion, rectified with this new version. I'm a big fan of this more streamlined and bulky barricade. Unfortunately, by the time the last night rolled around, Hasbro wasn't even trying, as the toy line for this movie were mostly dumbed down glorified shell formers, including Barricade. While prototype pics of a potential third party masterpiece barricade surfaced online a few years back, it appears that that project is now dead in the water. So at this point, I'd be happy with just an improved studio series version that could then maybe be knocked off into an oversized version for my display. For now though, the oversized knockoff of the crappy retail version will have to do for my Megatron's crew. Since the movie, Barricade has sort of become a frequently featured Decepticon across different media. He was a playable character in the video game War for Cybertron, and even if he never actually came out in either show, really cool and I guess you could say official design concepts of Barricade were made in Transformers Animated and Transformers Prime style. The latter of which actually had a toy released by the Transformers Collectors Club. He even received a nice and more mainline evergreen design based on his look from the last night. Anyway, a few years later, Barricade came full circle when he was finally, officially, g one for 2019's Siege and 2021's Earthrise toy lines. Although his inclusion was probably just Hasbro seeing him as an opportunity for a quick buck. Given his shared origin with the Autobot Prowl, it wasn't much of a surprise that he was basically a repainted and slightly retooled version of the Autobot military strategist, or more specifically, Smokescreen and added to the growing Datsun Brothers family. And while I get the rationale behind it, I kind of found both versions, especially the Earthrise one, rather uninspired. But oh well, G1 Barricade, yay! Now while I still haven't gotten around to writing up a proper entry on Prowl just yet, why not check out this story about another one of Barricade's aforementioned Datsun Brothers instead, here. Or if you want other Transformers stories, check out this playlist over here. Either way, Thanks for watching and hope you come back for more.